Discover hope and healing from the other side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Listen, they're all around you, close as a thought or a memory. Messages of hope. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. I am so excited about this show. It's a completely different kind of show from any we've ever done. I have six or seven guests lined up already waiting to talk to you. Usually I have one, sometimes two, but we're going to be juggling six very special ladies who are coming in to share with you some awesome stories just in time for the holidays to uplift us all, to show us that we are all part of something so much more than simply this earthly realm. If you're on this spiritual journey, you're probably familiar with some of the acronyms, most of them ending in E's, that have to do with amazing adventures and consciousness with connecting across the veil. For example, NDEs. I have a lot of people on the show who have had near-death experiences. So NDEs is one of them. We did a whole show about STEs, spiritually transformative experiences. And certainly there are those who have had OBEs, out-of-body experiences. Today, the focus is on an acronym that I coined myself, and it's NOEs. And that stands for No Other Explanation Stories than that we are all connected to something so much greater than ourselves, that we are not separate, that we are all interconnected expressions of one source, one light. And so thanks to my wonderful assistant and friend, Lynette, she's gathered together some of the, the really great stories we've heard. And if this goes well, we may make this a regular type of show because I don't know about you, but I can never hear enough of these stories. Uh, the, my first guest today is Colleen Smith. She's been on the show before, and she may have even told this story, but I want you all to hear it again because it's one of my favorites. So, Colleen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Suzanne. It's a pleasure. Well, I'm excited to tell the story because it's beautiful. Um, so my son, Austin, transitioned a few years ago, and pretty quickly we began getting signs, and a lot of them were feathers. So we have this whole beautiful jar of feathers. But today I want to tell you about one that intersected, to Suzanne's point, it pulled in a couple of people, and it's, uh, it's just a beautiful story. So it all began up at the Omega Institute up in upstate New York. And I was there watching a workshop uh, by Brian Weiss on past life regression. And Brian was up front and he said, in between regress regressing his clients through various lives, they will often see a white light. And so I sat in the back and I thought to myself, well, Austin, I wonder if you saw a white light. And right as I thought that, I looked up and there was a white feather floating down out of the sky. And now for you're, those, you're inside when this is happening, right? Yes. And for those that have been to Omega, it's the big auditorium with a smooth wood roof, no <laughs> beams, no rafters, no place for a bird, no place <laughs> for a feather. So there was this beautiful white feather coming down. But I still was like, oh, am I imagining this? So I turned to the lady next to me and I said, do you see that white feather? And she said, yes, I do. I was like, oh, I guess, Austin, you saw the white light. So I catch the feather. But there's more to this story. You I actually caught there. it. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I had this beautiful feather in my hand, and it was a wonderful hello from my son. And just that would have been enough. But um, the story goes on. Because uh, later in the workshop, Dr. Weiss, uh, there was an opportunity for me to tell the story. And this is where signs, I think, are often multi-layered because I'm a psychotherapist and I'm also a medium. And I was afraid to talk about the mediumship in front of other psychotherapists because of career retribution. And Dr. Weiss made this opportunity for me to get up and tell the story about the feather. And you guys, this was like my biggest fear. And their spirit was using this feather to not only say hello from my son, but to also get me to face my fear, which would then help the mediumship journey and my spiritual journey. So spirit is so smart. So I tell the story. And then later when we're on break, a woman came up to me and said, my son passed as well. And after hearing your story, 
um, it gave me hope that maybe I could get a sign. Do you think my son will eventually send me a feather? And you guys, as soon as she said that, what do you think happened? A feather right out of thin air came floating down. She burst into tears. I burst into tears. All the people around us who heard the story were all sitting there crying. And I like to think Austin showed her son how to send the feather. And wow. then spirit made whoever needed to hear it stand around. And it was this beautiful event that was multi-layered. And the moral of the story is open your mind, open your heart to the signs because it's been one of the uh, most healing aspects of the grief journey. And it's beautiful. Absolutely. And every reading I do, those across the veil show the kind of signs they're sending to the, their loved ones. And feathers are a common one, but there are many. And Colleen, if I didn't know you so well, I might be like perhaps some people who are listening or watching right now who say, nah, that's crazy. But I'm glad you said to people, you need to open your mind. Absolutely. Well, I thought it was crazy at first. I had to ask the lady next to me, do you see that feather? But now you guys, I have a whole jar of crazy feathers. They're beautiful. And, so. and your stories are off the charts. It's an example of what we call physical mediumship, where manifestations occur that you can't explain. They really are N-O-E instances, no other explanation. So thank you so much for sharing that one. Got yeah, thanks. Already. Thank you, Austin, for being such a powerful communicator. Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Wow. Well, I didn't do this on purpose, but I realized I had made a list of the order in which I would bring our guests on. And my next guest is Kim Milano. And it's another example, an NOE with physical manifestation, physical mediumship. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you, Suzanne. You want to tell people where we recently met? Yes, we met in Pittsburgh at a, a class that Suzanne was giving that definitely my mom brought me to and uh, that's where my magic my miracle happened and you're talking about your mom in the spirit world absolutely how long has she been across the veil it's a year she passed unexpectedly due to covid and um she's around constantly and and through the teachings of you i definitely get signs and this one couldn't well, be any better uh, actually, because we're both involved in it, if you'll let me, I'll tell the first part of that story. Absolutely. I arrived at the hotel in Pittsburgh Friday night for the Saturday morning class, and I decided to check out the hotel to see where I might get breakfast in the morning. Where's the fitness center? So I'm down in the lobby. It's dark. The, the Everything's closed. The gift shop and the Starbucks counter was behind a closed gate, but you could see the things that they offered. So I was standing there looking at the offerings when Kim walked by and we chatted for a little bit, but not about who you had across the veil, if I recall. No, right. Yeah. So uh, I recognized right away that you were in my class because you recognized me and we chatted and said, hey, I'll see you the next morning. So Kim, you walked off and I turned to the side to go back to looking at what I might get for breakfast at Starbucks. And right there in front of me was a basket with little packets of instant oatmeal about six or eight of them in this basket and as i watched one of the packets of oatmeal slid down in the basket on its own but then it slid back up and it made this squiggly little noise like this and i just was so stunned i looked at it and i knew i had just seen it and now as a medium my reaction was not what was that it was who did that <laughs> but but what threw me off was i couldn't sense who did it i asked my guide brenda was that you nothing heard i asked my main spirit guide was that you didn't hear a thing and then suddenly i just knew that belongs with that woman kim who i was just talking to but i couldn't tell if it was a man a woman young or old it was very disconcerting from a mediumistic point of view why can't i sense anything except what i sense was this great feeling of excitement like somebody was full of joy and eager anticipation like this is fun that was the feeling that was around and i just said well hopefully this will come to light later so you want to tell how it came to light in class the next day kim Yes. So, um, and I have to make a confession. 
I spoke to my mom in meditation and I said, let me bump into Suzanne. No so, way. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, we go back to the room. I realized that I forgot my contact lens solution. And that's when I went down to, to get my contact solution. So that's when I bumped into you. But well, in I, plan, think that, I think that that's a setup that this some, it's not an accident that you forgot your solution. Absolutely. And, um, but in, when I spoke to you during class, I came up to you, you were signing books and I was getting my book signed. And that's when you asked me, um, what oatmeal meant to me. And, um, but if I could correct you, yes. you said your mother's on the other side. And I, I remember this because I knew it related when you said it was your mom, I knew right. that related to your mom. And I said, did your mom like oatmeal? And yes. I want to show everybody what your reaction was. Mm -hmm. Guys, her hands flew to her mouth and she went, ah. I hope those of you listening to live radio can hear that giant gasp. And I knew in that moment and everybody standing around waiting to have books signed looked up because I don't know about everybody else, but I wouldn't normally react that way to oatmeal. So I said, Kim, why is oatmeal significant to your mom? And you can share it with us now. So prior to the week prior to the event in Pittsburgh, I had a craving for oatmeal. Every day I was eating instant oatmeal, maple and brown sugar, instant oatmeal every day. My mom loved oatmeal. So she'd make the oatmeal every evening before she went to bed. And it was a snack and it was a joke between the family because whenever anybody was hungry, she'd offer you oatmeal. So oh my God. just Friday, the morning of the night that we, um, our pants crossed about the oatmeal, I had had a packet of brown sugar, maple and brown sugar oatmeal. While I was eating the oatmeal, I was talking to my family about how much my mom loved oatmeal. We were laughing. And um, so to me, for you to say that was just, and for that to happen was absolutely amazing. And I'd like to add that I did get some signs. They were small signs in the, in the gift shop earlier when I went to purchase a, a notebook. And uh, so I did get small signs and I was extremely thankful for those signs. But as I was walking back to the room after dinner, right before I realized I didn't have my lens solution, I said, mom, I got all your signs and I love them, but I need something bigger. Give me something bigger. And that was literally 10 minutes before our interaction. So I couldn't be more grateful to you, oh. to her, to spirit. Well, to the, the, there's more to the story, Kim, because as you were there in the class, I had to share it with class as soon as the break was over. And I, and we together all of a sudden understood why she held back when that oatmeal moved, why she didn't let me feel her because I shared it with everybody on the spot. There was so much joy as the whole class celebrated this magical moment together. And what did you all tell us about your mom? I said, Suzanne, my mother loved being the center of attention and just there were a hundred or so people there all enjoying her story she loved the laughter she loved the excitement that was what she was all about so she definitely let this unfold exactly the way she wanted it to and yeah and, 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 talk about her. and i went back to take a picture of that basket of oatmeal and kim i don't know if i told you I have the picture to prove it. There were other flavors of oatmeal in that basket, peaches and cream, regular. And the one that moved, you guessed it, maple, what is it, syrup or sugar? Maple sugar, Maple right? and brown sugar, yeah. Maple and brown sugar. So your mom is a powerful communicator and I don't know if she had help, but we just send so much gratitude to the spirit world for that huge N-O-E. And I, I thank you so much because to me, I, I went there looking for more practice to connect and I connect with her. And that was just such, you know, such a big part of everything that I've been putting into practice. And thank you so much. Awesome. I know your mom appreciates it. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing with everybody, Kim. And thank I know you. she'll continue to send you signs. And mom, I hope you love this spotlight on you today. <laughs> oh, I can guarantee you. I actually feel her smiling right now. So no this doubt. Is great. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you. All right. This is fun. I hope you all are enjoying it as much as we are. We're going to move to our next guest, and that's Dolores Cruz. 
Dolores has also been on the show. She shared her book and her story of her journey with her son, and we welcome you to the show, Dolores. Thanks so much, Suzanne. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm happy to be here. So what I would like to share is what I call um, one of the biggies, or a couple of these, what I call biggies. Because, the NOEs, yeah, no other yeah. explanation. Yeah, I've gotten, it's been a few years, of course, since uh, my 24-year-old son did uh, transition as a result of a car accident. And um, of, in the beginning, although I always, I mean, I'm totally a, a believer in life after death and all of that, I wasn't yet aware of all the stuff we talk about here of the greater reality, had known nothing about near-death experiences, or let's just say connections, direct connections with our loved ones. Uh, although I was beginning to read a lot of books, and I have since read a lot of books. But I would like to say that about three months after Eric's transition, uh, which of course, you know, the whole family was still in quite a bit of despair, we were attending a, a family member, uh, a birthday party for a little girl. And we went to this birthday party, there, all of us, my three other children, my husband and I. And as we were walking in, I, I felt heavy in my heart thinking, you know, Eric would have been here. And I felt that, sure. that yeah. I was missing him. And then I corrected myself and I said, you know, he's here. I, I'm sure he's here. So I just kind of proceeded with that. And a little bit later, a group of us were standing around a table. It was outdoors, but we we're standing around a table holding plates of food and I don't know, eight or nine of us, whatever. And all of a sudden in my peripheral vision, clear as day was Eric. Oh. It, I, in full vivid color, he was wearing a um, Hawaiian shirt. He had his little, you know, a little bit of facial hair that, that a lot of the guys wear. Um, he was looking directly in the center of the group, just like he would have done, you know, because we were all having a talk. And it was in my peripheral, very clear. And of course, within a few seconds, as I slowly looked in that direction, it, his image did, did, did dissolve. Um, but right away I said, well, he is here. He is letting me know that he's here. And I just felt peaceful. I didn't you know, freak out or, or anything like that. I, I was happy. And after I waited till after the party to share that with my family members who were very thrilled to hear that. Um, and so many people, Dolores, have experiences like this and then immediately start to doubt it and they think they made it up. How did you deal with that? I, it, I never felt like it was not real. It just was him. I don't know, again, people talk about this, but there's just, a knowing that's it heart. it's the knowing yeah I, I just it never occurred to me that maybe it wasn't um and then similarly let's say three months after that so this is maybe six months after his transition um in at night uh i always went to bed ahead of my husband be, i mean because i had to get up at five um and he didn't require as much sleep as i did at any rate uh our habit is always you know he'll kind of lay down with me and we'll chat for a few minutes and then he'll leave the room. Well, at that time, you know, since Eric's passing, every time my husband would leave the room, I would immediately start crying. It just, I don't know why, I just, I didn't feel like I was holding anything. It was just that now it was just me and Eric, because I would talk to him. I'm sure there are a lot of people listening who can relate to that. Yeah, so I would, uh, I had been talking to him the whole time. I just did. And by now I was learning more and I had learned how to do uh, a self-guided meditation to spend time with him, which I would often do um, at that point. And it was something that took a few minutes to kind of, you know, breathe and work my way and kind of take a walk and go out a window and that whole thing and find a place with him that was beautiful. And it, so it took a little five minutes or whatever, but this particular night I was really tired I was still feeling the tears and I said to Eric, you know what, I'm not going to do the, the intro. I'm just going to go to our spot. And so I went to our spot and in my mind's eye, you know, I, I envisioned him. And right then at that moment in my ear 
literally in my ear I heard, I'm right here, Mom. And again, there was just that total knowing that it was him and peace that just surrounded me that was so beautiful, I immediately fell asleep. I was just wow. completely fine. And he was again letting me know. He clearly was aware that every night I would cry, you know, and he would yeah, want sure. to let me know. Um, I don't, it's not like I, you know, this doesn't happen all the time, obviously. This is just a couple of occurrences. I get beautiful other signs, license plates, and, you know, and birds or animals and a lot of cool stuff. Um, however, these are special in my heart. Just Those are super special and very rare, actually. And we love that they happen. But I want everybody listening not to feel left out that it hasn't happened to you. Miracle NOEs can happen anytime. But we just celebrate with you, Dolores, that, that Eric was able to get through to you in that beautiful way. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, I, I'm aware that, of course, I would love that to happen again and happen again. Um, and it doesn't, but it's okay because it doesn't have to happen all the time. It happened, I know he's with me and I carry that with me. Perfect, perfect. Thank you for making that point. Thanks for coming on the show. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we're gonna bring in our next guest, Carrie Hamilton. Carrie, if we run out of time on the break, we'll keep going, so don't rush. Uh, we wanna hear your lovely story. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So grateful to be here. Can you hear me okay? I hear you, and I just did a reading for you, boy, in the last month, and it was just so beautiful. I watched the video of it just the other day and relived that reunion with your beautiful partner. So why don't you tell us about Thank you. Your yes, so I have a couple of um, visual things I'll share, and I'll describe them quickly for those that can't see what I'm going to show. Um, so this is my love. This is my love, Macola. She's showing we, a picture of her husband and they're yeah. hugging and they're just handsome <laughs> and she's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. We have known each other 20 years, but our full love in its full form was not possible until four years ago. We worked together, we were friends, and then we magically were able to come together and it was like wildfire and it was like a four-year honeymoon. It was, it was absolutely magical. And because of the intensity of our relationship, we were always, nothing was left unsaid. We had a really incredible closeness. And so um, a dear friend of mine, when my husband became ill this year, she kept saying to me, I know of something that's going to support you when the time is right. And she was sharing this when we knew that he was not going to survive. And she was speaking of you. And so she was kind of just laying the foundation because she had found your work a few years ago. And so he passed on the 27th of June and I was with him and we were alone and we knew he was getting closer. And so it was a very special experience. And I was very fortunate that almost immediately within 24 hours, I connected with him. And Unlike others, I, of course, had this experience of, am I going crazy? Even though I grew up in a very open-minded, my mother would tell me, oh, there's your great-grandmother and that mockingbird that just flew by. When like you I say up, unlike others, do you mean others on this show? Because I know a lot of people no, listening no. to this show, they wouldn't, they would go along with you and say, am I crazy? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so I was continually having this dual experience of, well, I know this is no more real than the blue of my shirt, but I also know that grief does very strange things. So I, I had different experiences with him, increasingly more intense of him revealing himself in a spirit form. And, and it was wonderful and I honored it and I loved it, but I continued to think, okay, well, this is a wonderful coping mechanism that my mind is doing for me, but I still embrace it because I knew I was feeling him. These were not things that I'd ever experienced before or related to something I'd seen. So then my girlfriend started sharing more information and sending me information about you. And then I had the beautiful fortune of getting, we all had a cancellation in Sedona and I jumped up on that list to go to Sedona and come to your conference. Let and me learn just say that's funny because I was going to announce that we're having another such class in Sedona in March. So. Oh, uh, fabulous. It was magical space. things happen there. Yeah. 
Yes. And, and I really, he was there with me and it was beautiful. And really the message of asking for evidence really sat with me. And I got the pleasure of meeting Lynette there and found out that I was going to be in a city that she lives in. And so I said, would you mind if I called you for coffee? So about a month later or so, maybe it was a month and a half, I got together with her and had a wonderful conversation. And I shared with her that I was afraid to ask for evidence because what if I didn't get the evidence, then that, did that undo this whole experience I've been having with him? Like, I don't want to mess with the delicate brain and make it, make it doubt what I've been having with him. And she was so beautifully supportive and shared with me that, you know, evidence is a tool we use to trust the connection and that I had that connection. I didn't have to go back a step. That's and, right. and, you know, was in this open space and she shared her experience of her husband's passing. And we had some similarities in our experiences. And both of your husbands have the same name. Yes. And so <laughs> that was it, they're just they, it, exactly that connection. All right. Now, listen, you're building the suspense here, but we have to go to a break. Oh. So I want everybody to hang on and come back and join us because I know this magical ending and it's going to knock your socks off. So don't go away. Welcome back. You're listening to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Welcome back. Indeed, I could barely stand it. I have to hear the rest of Carrie Hamilton's No Other Explanation story. So Carrie, you were telling us about your husband, Mick, and how you felt him around but weren't quite believing it. And you were trying to get a reading with me and met Lynette. So what's the rest of the story? Yes. So I left Lynette, had an amazing experience and headed back to North Carolina. And when I got home, I had a present from a friend that I've known since I was six years old. And it was this beautiful little piece of art that has a line on it that says, I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And it's by E.E. E. Cummings. And it was very familiar to me because that is on another segment of the poem from a card that I gave my husband when we were starting to see each other. And it's also so significant to me that I included it in his memorial. So I wow. went to bed that night and thought, oh, how sweet. She saw a segment of our poem and that was so connected to us and sent it in this little piece of art and went to bed and was exhausted from my travels. And I sent her a quick video and I said, oh my gosh, how beautiful, look, I have it here. It's in front of his ashes and it's here, how lovely went to bed. So I wake up the next day with a text message from her. And she said, so are you saying that the plaque I found is literally an excerpt from the exact poem you used to read to each other? And that's also on the what's on the card in the video you showed me? I have to say I'm blown away. I didn't even know it was a poem. Okay. I just read the words and thought, Carrie needs this. My jaw dropped. I called Lynette. I messaged Lynette. And in that moment, I got a message from Mick. And he said, Mike showed me how to do it. That's Lynette's husband. And he said, I didn't know you needed such a literal message. I was already talking to you, but here it is linearly. And again, that knowing he just kind of dropped that information in my mind. And so it's, he's been flickering lights and talking to me ever since. And it was- And you've been believing it. That's the best part. Yes. Yeah. So magical so, and connecting in all levels. Yeah. And this is such a perfect example of what we tell everybody all the time, that our loved ones put thoughts in each other's heads. And he clearly influenced your friend, send this poem, see that, send that. And she had no idea it was that meaningful to you. And that, that you got the message that Lynette's Mike told your Mick or Mike, same name in a different language, yeah. that this is how you're really going to finally get her to believe. I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing with all of us that it is okay to believe, especially when you know in your heart. Thank you both. Thank you you're all. You're welcome. Oh, he is such a strong communicator too. So beautiful. Well, our next guest is Annie Brunelli. Annie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Love to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, my, uh, my story uh, is uh, connected with your teachings, Suzanne. We had just uh, uh, been completing others, my fellow students and I, one of your mediumship courses uh, in March of 2020. And uh, we were doing practice readings, as, as you know, we do. Good, you're a good student. <laughs> yeah, we were trying, we were trying. And I had some wonderful readers. It was just uh, uh, awesome. And um, with one of my earliest readings, my father came through for one of my readers when I was sitting uh, in a very dramatic way. He was very emotional. The, the reader was crying. And I, I um, want to interrupt here. Uh, when you're saying reader, you're talking about a student medium. Yes, a medium. student medium. That's exactly right. Uh -huh. And he, he brought her to tears. He was so emotional and so was she. And it was astounding to me. He was very repentant and apologetic. Uh, we were very contentious in life. Uh, he was an alcoholic and uh, hair trigger temper, and we had a very contentious relationship. Um, and he came through with so much apologetic tone and uh, expressed to the reader that he wanted to help me and my sister. And at that time, uh, we were considering moving to Ashland, Oregon, where we moved now. We have since moved, but we were sheltering in place during the pandemic here in California. So I was unable to go to look at property, but I was looking at listings online. And um, he went from expressing the desire to help us found a, find a place, which I thought was beautiful in and of itself. Uh, but then he started describing in detail uh, what I thought was his uh, ideal uh, home for us. Now, I uh, want to interrupt here a second and just clarify. This is a student medium who is picking this up from your dad in spirit. So yes. the apology, how did that sit with you? Did that feel this is really what was needed? This is good? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, right. it, it, it was very moving. It was shocking. I was and totally and, shocked. And did the and the sitter had no idea that you were planning to move. And here's your dad talking through her and telling her that he's going to help with your move. That's right. That's you right. You want to sign that girl up, whoever it was. I'm assuming it was a woman. <laughs> she was awesome. And I yeah. had not only one reader, but three who referred to this. It happened three times. Outstanding. Um, the first uh, the first time he expressed a desire to find to help us find a place. And then he started uh, describing the house in, in detail. And I couldn't relate or understand the descriptions he described a style of architecture that I hadn't seen on any real estate listings. Uh, he described a house sort of on the edge of a cliff with a water view. And I thought, this is wrong because the uh, Ashland is many miles from the ocean. So I thought, nice thought. Maybe he's trying to be wishful thinking. You know, he's trying to get me a water view. So I just thought, well, that's really nice, but not, it can't be real. And, uh, and then in the subsequent view, he went into more detail, specific descriptions of the house, the scenery, the setting, the environment. The and, color of the house? Pardon me? The color of the house? Yes. I was going to save that for my kicker at the end. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I table all of this. I, put, I had done a lot of reading since then. By the time we finally got to Ashland in July of that year, and this was March when these readings were happening, because I didn't understand the references. Um, and I, I had looked at a couple of listings before we got to Ashland. I thought maybe they would be fine. I didn't see uh, anything too promising, but we went up and on one day we saw a house and purchased a house. Um, and we, it really resonated with us. It was a very hot day, but there was a beautiful breeze blowing through this house. It was just, just awesome and cool. And we saw it. My agent said, oh, I could live here. She said, I love the house. And we decided 24 hours later to buy it. And uh, it wasn't until we came back, packed up, moved and unpacked that I found my diaries uh, about these readings because I thought, now, I need to go back and look at that. Sure. And man, my father just nailed this house. Uh, he described a house uh, on, the, on the edge of a ravine. Uh, in the front of the house, it's level. On the back of the house, there is a very steep ravine that goes down to a rushing creek that is down. Water view. 
Yes, we had the water view. He described a covered front porch in a craftsman style house. It is a craftsman style house with a covered porch. And he said he was looking at the views from uh, the porch of the mountains. There are two mountain ranges. Um, he said he, he loved the view. He even commented and said, I love this view. I want you to have this view as compensation for my emotional unavailability during my lifetime. Can you believe that? That blew my mind. And the, the kicker was for me that one of the readers came through and said, the house is, looks to be blue or gray. He's saying blue or he's saying gray. I'm just not sure which. And she repeated that a few times. And um, when we were looking at the listings online, the house was blue. But by the time we got there to see it, they had painted it gray. So it was both. Oh, I <laughs> love that. And he went into a description of the interior in some respects too. He described a beautiful desk where I could sit and do my writing. And the uh, previous owner did build a beautiful built-in desk. Uh, oh so he goodness. even saw the interior. It was just so awesome. So wow. I mean, there I, are multiple layers to this story. Number one, how those across the veil, when they wanna make an apology, they can do so through a medium how your father has grown, but also how you were guided to that house. You can see this web of how things come together. And, and can't you all listening now and or watching later feel that father's relief and happiness that he has somehow made his amends through helping in this way? Is that where you are right now, Annie? Oh my God, it's been transformational for me. I've gone from um, pity and and and, disli and dislike for my father to absolute love i have reached an absolute love stage with my dad he is awesome he came to see me when in missouri when uh, i came to your workshop he came right into my face uh, and during one point in our in our exercises there at holy you and i was just in tears i've gone all the way from uh disdain to adoration he is my best friend now it's so oh, awesome. my god this is this is it mediumship is so healing and that is just a beautiful beautiful story there is hope for everybody death is not the end it's an opportunity to continue growing on both sides of the veil and we thank you so much for sharing that beautiful example of healing and hope and help from across the veil thank you thank so you much. all right Wow, this is great for the holidays, but great for any time, isn't it? So uplifting and helpful. I hope everybody's just rejoicing. I'm getting multiple goosebumps as we go along. So now we're going to turn to our beloved Lynette Setscorn. She helps with the show. She helps with so many things in this work. Many of you have met her in my monthly mentoring webinars and elsewhere at events. Lynette has her own NOE, no other explanation story than that we are all part of this great big web and how helpful those across the veil can be. Lynette, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. And I have just so enjoyed these stories. I mean, what a delicious way to spend an afternoon. I could do this all day, every day. Well, <laughs> maybe we'll just have to do this once a month. I think yeah. it's too much fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very cool. I, I just love it. So, um, about a year before I met you, Suzanne, my husband died and um, it was a complicated death. We were in the middle of moving to Mexico at the time. He had come home. And he had been down there for a year by himself. He came home and he was not well. And then there were some awful things that happened. And we, it turns out we couldn't move. So when he got too sick to travel, I had all of our earthly belongings packed up into a container to ship to another country. Um, I had a business that I was winding down and I had a house in the U.S. and a house on the beach in Mexico. And worse, I had a car in the garage at the house in Mexico. So I didn't think Mike would get better. I didn't think we would ever move there, but I did, didn't know he was going to die. Um, so about a year after he came home and um, all this stuff had transpired, he did. He passed. He crossed over. And I knew immediately in the middle of my grief that I had to get rid of that house. It sat wasn't a fancy house it was a little shack but it was sat on the beach and so the maintenance was just impossible and there's a car registered to a dead man in the garage <laughs> and that was really bad because uh, Mexico's rules on um, ownership of vehicles are really strict the car was long overdue for renewal so I didn't know how I was going to handle it I hired a company in Yucatan uh, called Yucatan Expatriate Services 
which you might notice is the acronym YES. And they were working with me. I listed the house, I sold it, um, planned to spend a month down there to wrap everything up, get our belongings out, get that car shipped out, do the closing, get the house ready. Um, and, and I was working with YES, communicating with them almost every day. They were telling me what papers I needed. They were dealing with Mexico City. And we came to the car process. I got an appointment to ship the car out to Panama City. They said, we need the title uh, registration. And I told them I didn't have the original. They checked with, yeah. Yeah, I, as I listen to you, I think of so many people who are listening who can really sympathize with you because this is just after your husband passed and your brain is probably freezing in grief to deal with this kind of hassle. It's just the worst possible time. Well, it was awful. <laughs> I, yeah. I know that. And it's really interesting because I had not yet been to a medium, but when I finally uh, met up with one that summer, Mike apologized for having left in the midst of this, this chaos of being, you know, between two countries, having everything packed up down there I and mean, everything packed up up here. But anyway, before, he was this, helping... before everybody gets too distraught over Lynette, it, the, the beautiful part about these stories is we come to know that Mike's aware of all of this and your loved ones are watching all of this and trying to help you. So let's see how he did. Well, so I'm talking to the yes people just about every day. They're sending me blah, blah, blah. And I said, do we need, I said, do we need the original car registration? They called Mexico City. Yes said no. We don't need it. It'll be okay. <laughs> and I, meanwhile, I had turned the house upside down. I had looked through my office at the warehouse. I hadn't yet closed my business. It was still there. I dug through everything. And we had this little mail rack in the kitchen where we kept important things. And especially like uh, his Mexican immigration document, uh, you know, passports, birth certificates, social security cards, all of it hung in this little mail rack. And I kept, and car papers, you know, if we got a title renewal, license registration we would put it in there so I looked through that thing a dozen times at least so about 24 hours before I'm supposed to leave and go to Mexico for a month I got a call from yes oh we talked to Mexico City again and it turns out we do need the original registration on the car can you get it well I could get it but the problem is that it was 10 to 14 days from the tag agency in Tulsa for them to they had to mail it they couldn't give you one right there um, that then had to be FedExed to Medida, which is the capital of Yucatan. I'd have to find a way to get down there and pick that up. And all of the vagaries of things passing through Mexico City. So I just drama, didn't know drama, it. drama, lots of stress. Big drama. And I'm just, I was just hysterical. I was out driving around. I remember getting the call thinking, oh, this is hopeless. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I drove back to the house. I walked straight in the front door out the back door, opened it for the dogs, left the door open because it was a beautiful spring day. And then I came back through the kitchen as I would do 20 times a day in that house. I walked through the kitchen. I started to go into the hallway and I looked at that little mail rack, which was on my left. And I get goosebumps telling this story because I still can't believe it. But there was a paper, like half in. It was kind of like, it was almost doing that. Like there was Waving. a corner. Waving. Yeah. And I, I thought, no way, no way. <laughs> 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 I know Colleen and her feather, she's nodding here. You all can't see her, but she knows there's way. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, I am not kidding when I said I dug through that thing a dozen times before. I don't know where it came from. All I saw was the blank back. I thought that can't be it. That can't be it. I pulled it out. And holy cow, it was the original registration on that Nissan that was registered to a dead man in a garage in Mexico. <laughs> the very thing I needed to accomplish that last bit of wrapping up all that business in Mexico. And I had that feeling come over me that I now know is the presence of spirit. It was like where you're laughing and crying and it's all like this bubbly inside, you know, oh, that just that thing where you just know. And I'm, I, I still can't believe that. I can't, it's not my story, only, I can't believe it. <laughs> not only did it, it end up in there, but it's hanging out of the rack, waving at you to yeah. get your attention. That's awesome. You know, it's funny how the English language can be misinterpreted the way you align the words. And you said about this car registered to a dead man in a garage in Mexico. It sounds like the dead man is in the garage, but very clearly from your story, Lynette, he's not dead and he wasn't in the garage, the cars, of course, but he was probably standing there right beside you like like Patrick Swayze in the movie Ghost where he's moving the, the penny up the wall Mike is like 
Here it is, honey. Here it is. <laughs> I, yes, absolutely. I know he was there. I don't know how that stuff works. I mean, I know there are app ports and things like that, but but what I do know is that he made that happen. Absolutely. And I felt him there. I knew that I knew. And that was before I even knew what I know now, you know, wow. and had me, I've had so many contacts, so many messages, even when I went to the house to close it out. That was the first time I physically felt his touch on my shoulder. So yeah, I, I just, uh, so you can be in horrible grief. You can be absolutely miserable, not connected in any way. And still they can get through to us. That yeah. is the truth. But, and I'm hoping that shows like this one help people to notice and understand that this is how they get through. Dolores was so blessed to have the vision of her son and others had these signs, but sometimes they're not quite so obvious. The beautiful thing about all these stories is every one of you has accentuated the one thing in common they all have is that sense of knowing this is my loved one and they did it and they're right here. Ooh, anybody else got goosebumps with that one? Absolutely. So we're gonna bring in our beloved Bev Garlip right now. Thank you, Lynette, for that one. And Bev is going to do us the favor of reading a story from, I believe it's Gabrielle who did not want to come on the show. She was a little bit shy and I understand that. So Bev's gonna read it for her. Okay, from Gabrielle in um, Canada. And she prefaces this by saying, I was a very spiritual child. I prayed daily and my bedtime prayer included angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. And here's her story. On my 15th birthday, I was babysitting my younger nephews. I was happily dancing in the living room to an ABBA song, innocent and joyful, when the doorbell rang. I ran to the door full of exuberance, not even thinking of what might be there on the other side. I thought maybe my auntie and uncle had returned early. As I was running down the hall, hand outstretched to open the door, I felt my hand and arm go through an invisible field of energy. It felt like an electric shock. It threw me backwards and I landed on my back. My hand and arm were tingling. They were pins and needles and it hurt a little bit. As I stood up, I heard an audible male voice say, don't open the door. I obeyed. I tentatively walked up to the door and made sure it was locked by repressing the door button. Suddenly, a man's face came into view looking through the side window. He oh. drew back from the window and became yelling at me, uh, began yelling at me to open the door as he was the gas man and that he was there to fix a gas leak. Now, normally I would have opened the door as I was an obedient child and this man sounded full of authority. However, being that I had just been zapped and spoken to by a divine voice and still feeling the electric presence, I followed my angel's advice. That's when the man again peered through a small window and then moved away in the direction of the backyard. I was frozen to the spot. But that's when a divine voice in my head this time told me to lock the back door. As I ran down the hall, the full length of the house, I saw the man run past the dining room window and then the kitchen window. I slid the patio door closed and put a wooden pole in the place. From my peripheral, I saw the man come around the back of the house. I sensed him right in front of me on the other side of the glass but I did not look at him, I was too terrified. I ran upstairs and called my dad who arrived within minutes. I don't know who the voice was or how to connect to them, but I was rescued. Oh, we all know angels are real. And isn't it just so comforting to know that we are looked after? What a blessing that, that Gabrielle listened and I love that she allowed you to share that story with us, Bev. That's awesome. A little frightening, but we do have protectors, guardians, helpers. So okay. awesome. And it's so helpful when we call on them and when we give them thanks for helping us. 
I want to thank everybody for coming on the show. We have just a couple minutes left. So I want to share a pet N-O-E, no other explanation. And I'm going to use my dear little Rudy, our red dachshund who passed to the other side just this past January. Some of you may have heard me share this story, but it's a favorite of mine. So comforting. I was just new to channeling my guide, Sanaya, and I was still a little awkward about it. I had a group of friends coming over to be with me as I channeled Sanaya, and they weren't there yet, but I had asked Sanaya to start gathering. I sat in the living room, and suddenly Rudy got out of his bed, ran to the center of the living room, and started looking up at the ceiling, moving his head left and right. And I said to Ty, my husband, look at Rudy. And Ty said, he sees something. He's looking directly at something. And I said, or someone. I asked the guides to start gathering. I couldn't see them, but I know many of you listening right now have had your pets look at loved ones in the corner. You can't see them, but they're looking at something. So just then Rudy moved from the center of the living room, jumped onto my lap and stared up over my left shoulder behind me clearly looking at something. I looked, I couldn't see it, but I silently said, whoever you are, move to my right shoulder. And just like that, Rudy's head moved from left shoulder to right shoulder, following the movement of that unseen being of light that was very clearly there. So, of course, we all know now that just because you can't see your loved ones, your guides, your angels, angels and helpers, they are here as our wonderful guests today have helped us to know. And by the way, Rudy has made his presence known in several beautiful ways since he passed. Unfortunately, not for me, but for Ty. So, well, no, actually, one was for both of us. We were lying in bed. And Rudy used to walk to the end of the bed and stare at the bedroom door if he had to go out in the middle of the night. And we had just turned the light out and one of our new puppies walked across both of our legs and we both groaned like, oh no, who is that? We just took them out, they have to go. And we turned the light on and both of the puppies were right where they were supposed to be speaking. It was Rudy making that motion. And if that sounds crazy to some of you, others have had the experience of a loved one's touch, pet or in person, you know that touch. I hope these stories have touched all of you today. It's been our pleasure to share these no other explanation moments, and we hope they open you up to your own NOEs and help you get through these holidays with the joy of knowing your loved ones and your guides are right here with you. Lots of love to all of you. We'll see you back here next week. Thank you.